today we're looking at the AMD Duron 600, which is the first and also the slowest model available from the Duron range. It is a low cost alternative to the AMD Athlon and launched in June of 2000. Now it wasn't just an alternative to the AMD Athlon, but also competed very well with the Intel Pentium 3 and especially with the Intel Celeron. It was priced very aggressively, costing just $112 at launch. In the background we have Power Slide, a racing game from 1998 running on the Duron 600. You can find the system specifications and a build video in the description. Also thank you to Electromine for providing me the CPU. In return we got a 20% discount coupon. Just enter Phil's computer lab when you check out. Details below in the description. Now before we put the Duron 600 through some benchmarks to see what it can do, let's take a look at these specifications. The AMD Duron is based on the Spitfire core which is derived from the AMD Athlon with the Thunderbird core. It is for socket A or socket 462. It's got a whopping 128 kilobytes of level 1 cache and 64 kilobytes of level 2 cache which is just a quarter of what the Athlon has which comes with 256 kilobytes. The level 2 cache design is exclusive and without going into uh, technical detail it just means that it is less sensitive to the size of the level 2 cache. The front side bus is 100 megahertz but it uses double data rate so 200 megahertz effective. There are two versions of the Duron 600 floating around. There's the AST-1B with a core voltage of 1.5 and there's the AUT-1B with a core voltage of 1.6 volt. Now the CPU die on the Duron is exposed so you gotta be extra careful when mounting the CPU cooler. I do recommend that you go with one of those coolers that has a bracket with three mounting points. This spreads the load on the CPU socket and can prevent ripping out the center hook. Now I've spent quite a bit of time with this system. You can check out my recent build video. I'll put a link down to all the uh, related videos down below in the description. I also did a video looking at the issue with the power supplies for socket A and if you are planning on building a socket A system you should definitely watch this. The uh, choice of power supply is quite important. So based on this I made some changes to the initial build. The GeForce 3 Ti 500 turned out to be very power hungry so I'm now using a Radeon 9600 XT. It draws around 20 watts less than the GeForce and it also supports DirectX 9 which could come in handy at some point in the future. Now reviewing a CPU always needs something to compare to. This is the first socket A processor we are reviewing on this channel. So as comparison we have a new socket 370 system with the Gigabyte 6VT XE motherboard and the VIA Apollo Pro 133T chipset. Do keep in mind that with these comparisons we're not really uh, comparing the CPU so it's a little bit unfair we're always comparing the system so keep that in mind. The socket A system for example is quite modern with DDR memory and the Pentium 3 is a little bit older. However it's not our fault that Intel ditched the Pentium 3 so quickly for the Pentium 4. Now there are some uh, exotic motherboards that have DDR memory on the Pentium 3 but they're really rare and super expensive. So the parts we're using in this video is the Expa K7V600 motherboard with the VIA KT600 chipset, Duron 600 processor and 2 gigabytes of memory. For Intel we've got the Gigabyte 6VT XE with a Pentium 3 600 and a gigabyte of SDR memory. Now I didn't actually have a Pentium 3 600 so I just used the 800 megahertz model with the 133 megahertz front side bus and I just downclocked the front side bus and it runs at 600. Now the other components we're using is a G-Cube ATR Radeon 9600 XT. We've got a Sound Blaster Audi G2 ZS and a 120 gigabyte ID hard drive. Uh, an ID DVD ROM and a Corsair VS450 power supply. The operating system is Windows XP Home Service Pack 1. We're using the latest via drivers, DirectX 9C and also the ATI Catalyst 5.2 drivers. So basically all the components uh, are identical. I use disk imaging to uh, re-image the same hard drive. So I try to make it as fair as possible. So I think it's time to look at some benchmarks. First up we've got 3D Mark 2000 and we can see that the Duran 600 is just a tiny bit behind the Pentium 3. In 3D Mark 2001 the Duran is actually faster, 5109 points and beating the Pentium 3. In Expendable there's very little difference, 52 versus 50 FPS, so that game is extremely playable. 
In Dragon, also very similar performance. The Duron edges out one FPS uh, faster than the Panium 3. Let's have a look at some OpenGL benchmarks. Here we've got Quake 3 and the Duron uh, appears to be a lot faster. However, the Quake 3 benchmark and also the Series Sam benchmark, the via chipset motherboard that I'm using performs uh, a little bit on the weak side. And that's something I will look at in, 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 in some future videos looking at the socket 370 in MDK2 77 versus 75 so that's also very playable and in Sirius Sam 36 FPS versus 30 but once again this is a bit of a weakness of the motherboard or chipset that I was using for the Intel platform. Now power draw is the interesting thing and if you are planning on building a socket A machine definitely check out the video I did on um, can you power supply handle the socket A? So under idle, the Intel platform 44 watts, the AMD platform 68, and under load 76 uh, watts for the Intel system and 94 for the AMD, so quite a lot more. Now, the maximum power draw, basically my power meter has a reset button and then it starts um, looking for the maximum power draw. And I found the 3 Mark 2001 nature test to be uh, the most demanding one. So that's basically the maximum power draw you see when running the nature test of 3D Mark 2001. So to summarize it, the Duron 600 is extremely competitive. Using a modern KT600 chipset board with DDR memory certainly helps to get the most out of this processor. The Duron 600 competes very well with the Pentium 3 600 and socket A motherboards shouldn't be hard to find. They are easy to work with, support USB 2.0, have fast IDE storage controllers and other features that can make your retro life a little bit easier. Power consumption is the main concern but hopefully the video I produced recently will help with this and I will definitely revisit this topic in the future. On a personal note, this video took me ages to complete, not so much because of the Socket A stuff that was all working fine, however, I spent more time on the Socket 370 stuff. I worked with a lot of motherboards and mostly because the video card wouldn't fit into my slot 1 system, the AGP King, uh, it, it, it doesn't, you can't insert it, so I was scrambling on putting something together for the Socket 370 and there will be a ton of videos around that platform, at least I've got some good experience under my belt now and I kind of got a good idea how the chipsets compare and where the strengths and the weaknesses are of um, the different chipsets. So at the moment we also have very few CPU results, but as we go into the future and I'm going to make more videos, a clearer picture will emerge and I will definitely check out um, various other topics to do with the Socket A and Socket 370 platform. Now that's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed it and want to see more videos like it, please subscribe to my channel to get regular updates, share it with your friends and like or dislike. Now check out the video links in the description for rela uh, related content and comment down below what topics are you interested in with the Socket A and Socket 370 builds. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with another video.